Behind me is my new Renault Clio RS200, which I bought blind from an online car auction. So yes, I've only gone and done it again. I have gone and bought another Renault Clio RS. Since my previous one, the Silver 197, I became obsessed with just how well these cars handled. So I knew I had to have another one, but this time I wanted a bit of a cleaner example and I wanted to upgrade to the 200, which is essentially a facelift and slightly revised version of the previous generation. Now, as I mentioned, I bought this car completely blind from British car auctions, which is incredible risky and was a massive gamble however I feel it's paid off there are only a few minor issues I need to fix with the car which I will go into in this video however let's have a little walk around because I have been tinkering with the car ever so slightly already and I think it looks absolutely fantastic so here it is my Renault Clio RS 200 on the channel for the very first time and I am absolutely obsessed with it I love the little rev uh, revisions they've done from the previous gen I love how aggressive the front bumper now now is especially with this little aero kind of flap thing at the bottom of the bumper i think it just looks so much fresher and way way more aggressive now i mentioned i have been doing a few bits to the car already as when i bought it from the auction there was a very minor scuff just along this corner so i decided to have the whole front bumper repainted just so it wasn't like a patchwork quilt essentially i wanted it all to be absolutely pristine and very very nice same story with the wheels they were absolutely battered and i've had them all powder coated in gloss black and it has completely revised the car it looks so so fresh I'm, oh my God, I'm obsessed. They tie in very nicely with the black mirrors. And I also had these door handles painted in gloss black as well. So it all ties in nicely. These were previously like some kind of weird silver and had gone all kind of worn and just looked very, very tired. So that is very, very nice. I'm debating wrapping the roof gloss black as well. And I also need to re-wrap these bits as the one on the passenger side has a, a hole in it but they need to go gloss black as well same story with these little side trims they look like they had been opened on numerous walls and car doors so they were ever so slightly chipped so i had the whole thing painted just to tie it in very very nicely same story with the bumper there was a few distress marks along here and literally the tiniest little scuff here which was messing with my ocd so again the whole rear bumper painted just to freshen it up that little bit more. And a revision I like um, on the 200 over the 197 is the fact the exhaust tips are now integrated into the frankly huge rear diffuser. I think that is just so, so aggressive. The thing this car is missing, and I think it completely transforms the back end, is the addition of the cup spoiler, which I may add at a later date. However, I am just obsessed with this car. I think it looks great. And two reasons I love it so much are the addition of the super rare Recaro CS yellow dot bucket seats which honestly completely transform the overall feel of this car from a little hot hatch to just a go-kart for the road now uh issue with this seat is it's very common that it wears here and here so i do need to find a company to repair this for me to make it looking uh, to make it look very very fresh but oh the interior as well this is such a clean example got a little yellow rev counter there as well which i love this car is such a clean example and i feel like i looked out buying this car from an auction it was completely blind and i only had the photos and the kind of mechanical reports to go from but this is a one owner car 2011 model with only 73,000 miles and i absolutely love it i can tell this car has been well looked after and that's exactly what i wanted so now i think the time has come to take it on the road see how it drives and discuss how much better this is to the previous gen that i owned so everyone welcome aboard my new Renault Clio RS 200. Now let's start the video with how this feels to drive compared to my old 197. Now don't get me wrong, the 197 I had was an amazing car. It was so much fun to drive. However, 
it was a little bit tired and you could definitely tell that that car had had a very difficult life. That car had definitely been ragged given every single opportunity and you could tell this when you drove. It had some very common issues such as the front suspension was knocking and the all famous chocolate gearbox would crunch in third gear. So things like that would kind of ruin the drive. Although it was a very fun car, it was just tired. It needed a bit of money spending on it. And that is where I wanted to upgrade to a 200. Now this car, as I mentioned, has been very well looked after. It's only had one previous keeper, full service history, and it looks like it's had a fair amount spent on it over the years by the one owner, which is good. That's what you want when looking for one of these cars. You want the specialist kind of service history. And if you take care of them, they will reward you. And that's exactly what this car has done. I felt it was a massive gamble buying a car completely blind on an online auction, but I am so glad I did because I think I have looked out with this one, touch wood, because there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Yes, it needs an MOT next month, but I've got absolutely I'm not scared at all. I think it will pass that with flying colours. It has got one issue which I have read up on, which is the airbag warning light, which seems to be, from what I've read, a connector underneath the seat. So whenever I adjust the seat, it does come back. But at the moment, it's gone. So that's fine. But let's chuck it round these B roads because that is what these, these cars are all about. And this is the road where I fell in love with my 197 because I'm still accelerating and I'm flying around these corners <laughs> and I've caught up with the golf in front. Now this is just the complete magic of Renault Sport. They handle so incredibly well and I definitely didn't expect it. It's honestly to be very, uh, very cliche, it's a go-kart for the road and it handles like it's on rails. This car is lacking the Miltec exhaust, which my previous one had. However, even in standard form, it still sounds good. Not too shabby, but the biggest change of this car over my previous gen has to be these Recaro CS yellow dot bucket seats. They have completely changed the overall driving characteristics of this car. They hug you so incredibly well because these side bolsterings are so aggressive and hug you incredibly tightly. So when you're throwing it around the corners, you just do not move. And that has completely changed and transformed the overall feel of this little hot hatch because it's just great. Not only do these seats look fantastic, they're so functional when you're doing what this car was made to do, which is throw it round bends like these, rev it out all the way up to 8K. Oh, bounce it off the limiter. Oh, these cars are so bloody good. <laughs> wow. I am completely blown away by the Renault Clio RS package. I loved it in my 197 and I wanted to find a pristine example and get upgrade to the 200. And that brings me onto a dilemma because I have truly fallen in love with this car and my goal was to start buying and selling cars. However, now this car as a package has certain things like working air conditioning, Bluetooth music, Recaro seats, facelift, looks good, low mileage, well taken care of. I'm honestly debating keeping it and using it as my daily. My daily is a, at the minute, a 1.2 Renault Clio Extreme Edition. It's black and the blower is giving up, so I don't really have air con. So it's just letting me down ever so slightly and it's only got around 70 brake horsepower. Where, and I definitely don't get as much of a kick driving it as I do this. <laughs> And also, if I keep this, I can modify it and start doing a few bits. I really would like a front splitter. I'm debating doing the roof black and just various other little bits, maybe an exhaust, 
But that is very exciting, I think. The future of this car is quite exciting. I obviously need to get this seat repaired and maybe a steering wheel retrim to make it truly pristine. But honestly, it's so, so, so good. I'm in love with this car. It's amazing. It's everything my previous one should have been, if that makes sense. It is truly a joy to drive. And also, whilst the R8 is out of my possession, this offers a fun and nippy package for a lot less money whilst, you know, I substitute whilst, you know, something happens until I get my payout, who knows? So this could be a good stopgap until the R8 replacement arrives. So that is my current scenario and dilemma, but <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the Renault Clio RS as much as I do. If you have enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you do not miss out any of my future upcoming content with the Clio RS, maybe a couple of track days, and of course, the all important Audi R8 replacement. Thank you once again for watching, guys. Thank you, as always, for the support and I'll see you in the next one.